I can't believe I'm making this video. Hi guys, with with everything going on, I just wanted to talk to you one-on-one -on -one and set the record straight. Right here on my relatable ass floor in this raggedy ass t-shirt that actually costs $200. I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for me to address some old tweets that I twatted eight years ago and let me just say first, foremost, and unequivocally that I am sorry if you were offended. I was only 25 at the time that I said those things, so I was still a child, you know, a child who was still growing and learning. Ah, I really wanted to get through this without crying. I did already say I was sorry with that notes app oopsie that I posted to my IG stories yesterday, but some of you guys are still big mad. Oh, make sure you guys can see. So Jesus just really, he put it on my heart that it was time to get the courage to show myself and make a monetized video apology with really long pauses in it because YouTube videos need to be at least 10 minutes long to qualify for mid-rolls. Can you see the, are these tears reading? Can you see them? And let me just say, when it comes to those tweets and the things that I said, I, you guys, I don't support fat shaming of any dog, of any breed. I never should have said what I said about that Dalmatian. Ugh. And I just need you guys to know that the person who I am today would never do that. I fully support the body positivity movement with my whole heart. I only quote those things that I said over eight years ago because I was being manipulated by another influencer who I was using for clout. <laughs> and I have receipts to prove this, but I'm not going to show them because my lawyer said, mm -mm. like, all of this was really long ago, okay? And you guys, I just bought another Tesla last week. What am I supposed to do? I just really need you guys to accept this apology. <sighs> I just really appreciate it if you guys just completely forget this ever happened. <laughs> And then also, I'd really love it if you guys would attack anyone who ever tries to bring this up again later because, like, I just said I was sorry. Well, you done did it now. Or more likely, eight years ago. Because 2012, I don't know what it is about that year, but that seems to be the year that everybody done f***ed up. You said something in a video, or you tweeted something on Twitter, or you did something, and now you are getting dragged and it's time to film a YouTube apology video as your act of contrition, which of course requires a beat. I mean, we want to make it clear that you're going through it, but you don't want to look ugly. So this is a very particular style of no makeup makeup, I guess, where you want to look distressed, but still really pretty. Some of you guys will know that I was doing my makeup every day in the month of May. I was doing something that I called a slay a day in May. And yes, it did turn out that I invented that. No one had ever used that hashtag before I created it on Instagram. I was quite chuffed with my Myself. Anyway, during that time, I started using this brow wax. This is by Patrick Ta. I really like this product, but due to the nature of it, it makes me have to do my brows first because it can sometimes leave a little bit of the wax kind of around my brows. And I find it's easier to clean that up if I do that before my foundation so that I'm not doing that on top of my foundation. Makes sense? Of course it does. So I'm just taking the product. This is the tinted one, if anyone cares. Everything will be linked in the D box as always. So don't be asking me. Taking that on a spoolie and I'm just gonna go ahead and groom my brows because the thing with brows in a YouTube apology video is you want them to look done without looking done. Again, this is no makeup makeup. So really what it is is we don't want them to look too done. Now, many of you guys will know that I have face tats. These are microbladed brows. So I don't really need to add any additional color. I just want to get my brows groomed and going in the direction I want so that they're not looking all crazy. Just I woke up like this, but not really. I'm just gonna work this through. Like I said, I'm gonna groom the brows and I'm not gonna add any additional product to these in terms of color. Groom, groom, groom. So there's one brow done. This is the other brow. Literally, I woke up like this. I've got a lot of products still on the spoolie, so rather than dip back in the pan, I'm just gonna spritz the spoolie itself. This is a water activated product and get the other side. 
Brows are done, let's talk about base. We don't want anything high coverage. We don't want double wear. I mean, you could sheer something like that out with moisturizer if you like, but we're going for no makeup makeup that can stand up to some conditions, shall we say. Though we've gotten to this point of needing to make a YouTube apology video because we've been exposed as frauds or charlatans or racists or all of the above, we still don't want people to know we have pores, girl. So I'm just gonna use a pore filling primer in my hot spots when it comes to me having the most pores and texture. And it follows that these tend to be the areas where I also get the most oily, so. Nice little pore filling mattifying situation. Now, when it comes to choosing a foundation for your YouTube apology video, you want something that is ideally relatively sturdy without being high coverage. So as opposed to a double wear, I think something like MAC Face and Body would be perfect because this is a water resistant foundation and it's more transfer resistant than most foundations as well. So I really feel like it can stand up to whatever, again, conditions that might be going on during your video. I mean, let's face it, ideally you're going to be crying. Uh, I gotta edit this out. Uh, there, that's better. Uh, or you at least want liquid to be trickling from some sort of orifice. <laughs> and we don't want the foundation streakies once the waterworks start flowing. No, we don't. So I'm gonna go in with MAC Face and Body, but first, before I go in with my foundation, I'm gonna go in with a glowy product underneath. This is just kind of an all over illuminizer type of thing. This is from Charlotte Tilbury, it's called Wonder Glow. And I'm just gonna put that everywhere. The reason I'm using this illuminator, really any kind of glowy primer would work is Again, we want to look good and frankly angelic right now. So oil and grease bad, but glow, always good, especially when you're sorry. You definitely wanna be winking toward a very angelic sleigh since we are apologizing. Additionally, I'm going to go on the high points of my face with another glowy product. This one's a bit more intense in glow. This is the Hollywood Flawless Filter. And this is going to basically allow me to look like I didn't highlight and that I'm just naturally um, cherubic just on the tops of my cheekbones with that. I'm not going ham with highlighter because no makeup makeup. I'm too sad and sorry to really do makeup. Next, I'm gonna conceal. I'm concealing before foundation. This is basically underpainting. I almost always do my makeup this way nowadays. It was something I used to do years ago, stopped doing and then went back to doing. I find that basically underpainting my concealer is great because one, it means that I can use less foundation over top because the concealer has already done a lot of the work. And most importantly for this particular type of look, it makes everything blend together more seamlessly. It makes it a lot less detectable that I'm even wearing both concealer and foundation because um, it just blends better, at least on me and in my opinion. I'm not using a maximum coverage concealer. This is the Naked Concealer by Urban Decay. And hopefully you guys saw, I don't have a lot on right here or, or right here. And I'm gonna blend it out with my fingers because even though I detest having makeup, on my hands because then it just gets on my furniture and my clothes. The fingies are usually the best way to blend complexion products. It's just, it's just the tea. And because my lady mustache is looking a little aggress right now, I'm actually gonna go ahead and follow up with some concealer there too. And a little bit down here where I have hyperpigmentation. So again, the reason I like essentially underpainting with concealer is, you can see the concealer's already done so much work evening out my skin tone that the foundation I won't need to use very much. And the less you use, the less noticeable it is that you even have anything going on. You won't be able to detect the sorcery. We're still underpainting. We're actually going to do a slight, slight contour of my cheekbones and my eye sockets with a cream product. And I do this both as underpainting and with cream to make it less detectable. You could use powder, you could use a contour powder or bronzer in the crease and on the cheekbones, whatever you wanna do. But I find that cream and liquids always just look more believable because they melt into the skin better. And we need this dimension because once we add the foundation, we don't wanna look like a pancake, right? So we still wanna have a bit of structure to the face. Again, this is the Naked Concealer by Urban Decay and just a shade that's a few shades darker than my skin. And I'm gonna do, again, slight contour of my cheekbones and a bit in my eye sockets because my eyes are um, hooded. So this will help me to create a fake socket and give me a bit more of a deep set look than what I really have. By the way, so before I even go in, I should mention this just to show you how 
careful I want to be with this. This doe foot applicator, it has a wider side and then a thinner side. I'm going to make sure I'm using the thinner side and lay that against my face rather than this wider side so I can really control how little product I put down. Again, we're trying to look like we didn't do anything. So I'm going to do that there and I'm just going to dot a bit along my eye socket like such as and we're gonna blend that bitch out. I'm gonna take this, I, I like the Fenty sponge for this because it has this narrow side and it's really good for blending out this small area. And hopefully you guys can see that gave me just a little bit more of a shape in my eye area that I don't actually have because I got chubby lids that are also somewhat hooded. Not as hooded as all, but more hooded than many. Now we're ready for the foundation. As you can see, I've gotten quite a lot of mileage out of the concealer and the sculpting products. The highlighter is looking good. The cheekbones are visible. I've got a bit of a definition, my eye area. So I don't need much of this and it kind of doesn't matter anyway because MAC Face and Body, if you've ever used it, it's light coverage anyway, which is perfect for these purposes or if you're just a light coverage loving hoe, like such as myself. So I'm gonna take that on my hands and I'm just going to go in and just kind of harmonize everything with the foundation. It's not really even that I need that much more coverage, but it'll just harmonize everything that I've already got on my face. Now blush, she's a tricky one because blush can be the dead giveaway depending on how strong you go with it. As I said already a few times and as my OGs will already know, Cream liquid is the way to go, according to me, who knows nothing. This particular blush that I have is discontinued, but I think a nude tone is the way to go. This may not even show up on camera, but I do like this one a lot for real life because it really doesn't look like much of anything. It just looks like I'm healthy. Because even though our life is in shambles, we still wanna look like we're drinking our water, girl. And I find that cream blushes, every formula I try, fingies, Go in with the fingies and just remember to wash your hands, which we should be doing anyway because Dorona. The cream blush especially, it's great to go in with your fingers because you can just feel your cheekbone. Put it down, blend. All right, I feel like that looks hella natural, but just because, again, we're trying to be surreptitious with this makeup, I'm just gonna quickly dab over that, not adding any additional product to the brush that I use to blend out my foundation, just to give it one final blend. Now comes the question of setting with powder. In my opinion, set only the areas that you need to set. For me, I would wanna set my under eyes because I do have on concealer and around my nose because I tend to get kind of a, a shine right here in the crease and it's, it's very unattractive. So I'm just going to set those areas lightly because too much powder is a dead giveaway that you are wearing makeup. That's it. And now it is time for mascara. And this is critical. Get you some waterproof mascara. Me, myself, personally, I hate mascara. Or more accurately, I hate removing mascara. So I usually just wear a strip lash, even just a light one in real life, and then bottom lash mascara. So at least it's less to take off. But you can't be walking around with a strip lash in a YouTube apology video, girl. After all, we're meant to look very, very distraught and putting on a lash is somehow in my mind completely antithetical to the distress that you are presumed to be going through behind the scenes. So we're just gonna get a layer of this lash primer down on both eyes. I really hate mascara as well because of the curl of my lashes. My lashes basically touch my eyelid on, like they curl so much that they curl back in and touch my eyelid. So it's pretty much impossible for me to get mascara on without also getting it on my skin, unless I'm just not getting it fully all the way to the tips of my lashes. It's extremely annoying. This mascara that I have here is one that I got when I was in Japan. So I will not have a link for you guys, most likely. But just use whatever waterproof mascara you like. Okay, that's one coat of mascara, and I think I'm going to leave it at that, actually, and just comb through because this particular mascara uh, it kind of clumps my lashes together and makes it look like I have less than I do, which not a fan. Last but not least, there is one fatal error that I don't always see, but I see it often. Just one thing that seems to go wrong with this apology video face beat, and it tends to be a poor lipstick choice. I've seen this a handful of times, but with 
Whatever lipsticks these booty gurus are choosing, it leaves them with butthole mouth about halfway through their video. Or they'll pick a lip gloss that leaves them with the schmutz, you know, the little spittle right here on the inside. Yuck. And because in this tutorial, we're trying to figure out how to do a YouTube apology video right, I'm gonna play it safe and I'm just gonna use this balm by NARS. This is basically like foundation for my lips because my top lip is a little bit deeper in color than my bottom and this just helps to even them out and make them look a little bit more close in tone. And that is a wrap for the makeup. So now we have to talk about other aesthetic choices for the YouTube apology video. The booty gurus particularly really love to wear Christianity signifiers. Personally, I think they need to leave Jesus out of it, but this is a YouTube apology video and we are leaning on the Lord to make sure that none of these folks out here stop our bag. To that end, I did bust out the cross necklace to let everyone know, hey, God fearing woman, Forgiveness, please. Now let's talk about attire. Pick a shirt that preferably has some holes in it. You just kind of want to create an air, a sense that you've been wearing this shirt several days and you haven't bathed. If you're Dane Shawson, you're like 20 steps ahead because you always look like this. Hair definitely needs to be a disaster. A crazy looking top knot is a great way to go. You really just want your hair to look as unstable as your social blade. And last but not least, bonus points for glasses. If you have glasses but never wear them on camera, wear them on today. If you don't have glasses, wear somebody glasses. With all of these tips in mind, I'm going to do a couple final touches, you know, filling in my moles, stuff like that, and I will be right back. And here are the requisite awkward slow-mos to show you guys the finished look for this YouTube apology video makeup tutorial. I had to take these glasses off because I actually got delasic years ago. So these are, I don't even, tell me why I still have my old glasses. I guess I'm just a hoarder, frankly. But yeah, these are my old real glasses and now they've given me a headache in under five minutes. Kept my hair in my disaster bun as I had shown to you previously. And I changed into the compulsory raggedy t-shirt. In fact, since I ain't got no palettes or vitamins to sell, the, my raggedy t-shirt is actually my old merch. Some of you guys will remember I did a limited run of some merch last year, but come to think of it, that reminds me I've got a limited run of merch going on right now. It's something that y'all have been asking for for a very long time. So if you've ever wanted my extremely famous sign off on a shirt or a mug or a tote bag, we now have t-shirts and more linked in the D box for you. I do expect to have some version of this merch available forever since this is my thing. This is my thing that I always say. But this first one is going to be limited just so I can get a sense of what items are most popular and which ones you guys aren't really feeling. And then from there, I'll have a better sense of what I want to keep permanent. Anyway, that's a wrap for today. This is completely different from anything I usually do. This is almost like straight comedy. Super fun. I hope you guys liked it after floating the idea in my live couple days ago since so many of you were into it I was just like why not let's just see what happens so thank you for hanging out with me maybe you even got some ideas of how to do a nice no makeup makeup beat and I will see you guys in the next video but before I go I want to leave you with a gentle reminder never trust anyone with a morphe code and I told y'all I'm finally being proven right, but I told y'all. So bring that gentle reminder with you by snagging one of them t-shirts. Love y'all. Bye. That's a, that's a nappy-headed hose there. I'm going to take that down. <laughs>